such a pleasure to be here amongst you women and um, uh, data scientists. I'm just thrilled to be here. I'm an applied mathematician by training. I have 22 years of experience um, in applied mathematics. And today I'm going to talk with you about the intersection of machine learning and cybersecurity. So for cybersecurity, um, there is a wealth of data. Uh, and you know, there are millions of packets on any one network per, per minute going across the network representing communications. And um, largely, those networks are protected by signature-based approaches. And we know that those are inadequate. Um, that is, that signatures are largely um, uh, representative of known attacks, previously identified attacks. And uh, that is um, not what necessarily one needs in order to be able to detect anomalous behavior or the so-called zero-day attack. And today, one of the key problems that um, our customers are interested in is um, understanding the vulnerabilities, uh, the need for resilience and robustness in a variety of different types of networks. Networks um, such as in-vehicle networks that may be in a, a, a variety of different domains, whether that be space, um, air, undersea environments, um, surface sea environments, ground vehicles, and of course enterprise IP networks, as well as mobile networks, mobile ad hoc networks. Uh, and, and so there are this variety of networks with different protocols. And what we want to understand is the vulnerability to cyber attacks. We want to also be able to develop some level of autonomy in order to predict the characteristics of those attacks, to detect them, monitor the networks and detect those attacks, um, and respond to them with active responses. And uh, so there, there's a strong need for mathematical and computational approaches which can do just that. And, and, and so one key research question is, are there accurate computational approaches um, that can uh, maintain uh, network robustness and resilience that can address our security needs? And so, you know, I mentioned initially that signature-based approaches are inadequate because they're based on previously known attacks. Um, and so what we need is anomaly-based approaches, anomaly-based models, though they face their own issues. That is, they typically have high false alarm rates or high false positive rates, whereas, of course, signature-based approaches have high false negative um, rates. Uh, so we need to assess and address that issue of error with mathematical approaches, computational approaches that can reduce such error. And supervised learning presents a, a you know, well-studied um, set of algorithms and models that can address this problem. And so one can analyze uh, unlabeled data, that is the type of attack, the zero-day attack, which one hasn't, um, it, it's an a, a unknown unknown, right? Uh, you know, we want to be able to assess that. We want to be able to make predictions based on the clustering that one can derive from these unsupervised learning approaches. So what we see in this animation here is a simple um, application of online k-means approach uh, a, a, a clustering approach where the blue nodes are representative of benign traffic, the um, red nodes are representative of a botnet of a variety of characteristics, and um, the links between those nodes are when any two uh, IP addresses or devices that are networked are communicating. And so this model is running online to be able to detect in uh, at near real time uh, an attack. 
uh, one needs to not only just examine um, these unsupervised learning approaches, but also understand something about the shape of the data prior to going in with any one of these um, approaches. And so there are these uh, emerging um, approaches in uh, topological data analysis where one can examine the persistent um, homological structure or uh, persistence diagrams. And this is a depiction of a CIC IDS 2017 botnet um, data set, uh, Canadian data set, and the persistent diagrams for both the malicious and um, benign data. And what one can see by examining the hom um, homological structure here is that um, there are uh, well, through the filtration of via, via torus rips complex, you can see that there are connected components that persist in the data. And one can also, um, more generally speaking, discern whether there are um, holes in the data, uh, whether there are voids in higher dimensions, and be able to take that topological information and include it into the feature space. Uh, so just at a um, high level, the contributions technically that I'll go into more detail in the subsequent slides are uh, a novel um, hierarchical agglomerative clustering approach that takes what we've known um, in the in, in, uh, uh, statistical learning, unsupervised learning um, about agglomerative clustering and then combine that with ans an ensemble learning approach um, in order to detect uh, botnet traffic and, and then be able to apply that algorithmic approach, that combined ensemble learning and uh, agglomerative clustering approaches um, in order to uh, first discern whether there is um, an attack ongoing in Canvas that is controller access network bus traffic in an in-vehicle network, as well as IP network traffic of a variety of types. And then um, subsequently evaluate the prediction performance of said algorithms. Some related work in this area specifically um, to applying anomaly-based um, intrusion detection methods to CAN bus traffic and IP traffic. So one of the seminal um, papers is by Dorothy Denning um, in 1987, where she looked at uh, anomaly um, detection for intrusion detection. And then there have been many works and I can't cover them in this short time, but um, more specifically related to CANBUS and applying um, machine learning, there are these ones here listed. A survey um, by Al Jara, and then um, Lockman has a deep autoencoder anomaly detection model for CANBUS. Um, and then there have been um, uh, additional works. There's a, an additional one by Young and his co-authors on um, the fast Fourier transform, and it's, uh, uh, application to the CAN. For um, this ensemble hierarchical agglomerative clustering method, EHAC, um, it's an, uh, as mentioned, a combination of ensemble and um, unsupervised learning where, uh, you know, we talked about pre-processing and cleaning data. That's one of the initial steps. Uh, so, you know, in, in machine um, learning, we have a variety of techniques for dealing with missing data. And in cybersecurity data, it's often that you have um, missing data. And so for that instance, one could use um, multiple, and, and I did use um, multiple uh, imputation um, by chained equations or mice. And so then you, you have now a complete data set, no missing data, but then it's imbalanced. Largely you have a, a sea of benign data and then a small fraction of that data is your uh, attack data or cyber attack data. And so it's imbalanced and how does one deal with that? There are a number of methods, but one um, in particular that I've used is the synthetic um, minority oversampling um, technique, SMOTE. 
And then, so now you've, you've cleaned the data, there's no missing data, you've balanced the data, um, and then now you have to do some feature standardization methods, um, and uh, you, even prior to that, you must encode the data. You have mixed data. There are some categorical features, like the, the prototype being used. Um, uh, there there you know, are a number of um, uh, text-based data in the feature space, and then there's also numerical data. So you have to use a variety um, or select from a variety of encoding methods. Here um, in this work, I just used one hot encoding. Um, and then, okay, now your data is cleaned and it's pre-processed. Um, so this is where you apply um, agglomerative clustering methods. There are a number of them. There are graphical algorithms, that is the single linkage, complete linkage, group average linkage, and there are others, and one can innovate additional ones. And then there are geometric methods. There's Ward's method, and then there are several others. Here, um, and, and for each one of those linkage functions, there are metrics that one can use, right? So uh, there is the LP um, norm or distance, and then there are cosine distances. There are a number of metrics. Here I'm using L1, L2, or Euclidean, and cosine for each of them. And then a committee method to vote across the methods. Uh, so single linkage is known as the nearest neighbor algorithm. It's basically, uh, and for each of the agglomerative clustering methods are bottom up. You're starting with a, each element in your feature space, each observation is, um, is a cluster. And then you uh, iteratively build based on your um, distances or dissimilarity within cluster dissimilarity. And so this one is a nearest neighbor where you're looking at the minimum distance um, between two uh, uh, non-overlapping, non-empty clusters in order to decide whether to merge. There's the complete linkage uh, where one is using a different within cluster uh, dissimilarity. Um, group average, uh, even a different within cluster or intergroup uh, dissimilarity. Ward's uh, method. This one is known as minimum variance, where you're attempting to, the objective is to minimize the um, error of the sum of squares. And so here, now we have the data. Um, this is just an example of you know, one of a million of um, network sessions, mixed data, IP addresses, and so on. And uh, here we have labels in this specific data set from Czech Tech University, CTU 13, but in the analysis, we don't use those data, uh, those labels until the prediction performance. Here we see EHAC has superior performance to, to a much simpler algorithm, k-means, for a variety of different types of data. We have the CAN bus data where you can tell that the CAN bus attack is very simple and that, that there's perfect um, uh, uh, detection both with a simple k-means application and EHAC. And then also there's the CICDS uh, 2017 data set where we're looking at F1 score, the harmonic mean of precision and recall, and um, mutual information. And then there are two different botnet scenarios from the Czech Tech University, or CTU 13 data set. Uh, one is a, a DDoS, and the other is a peer-to-peer -peer attack, and both um, with, with better than random performance um, and better than uh, general k-means. In conclusion, as one, it has a wealth of um, data in cybersecurity that we can apply a variety of methods, whether from um, you know, analyzing the topological data structure uh, through the persistent homology and the persistence diagrams to get the shape of the data. Uh, one can um, also examine a variety of unsupervised learning approaches and combine said topological uh, methods to, to improve performance. And, and then um, we can consider the accuracy of the data clustering and be able to um, make predictions when in the absence of labels and improve on the detection of any one um, algorithm through ensemble learning. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>